Hey there, Mr. Olson here. And we got equations. Boy, do we have equations. This lesson is like tons of equations. All sorts of equations. Well, mostly equations with unknowns on both sides of the equation. But it's going to be great. So 4a plus 3 equals 7a minus 9. Oh, pause the video, try these out. Okay, we're back. 4a plus 3 equals 7a minus 9. The rule I gave you guys last time was you always want to subtract off the smaller unknown. So we have a 4a and a 3a, subtract the 4a. So 3 equals 3a minus 9. Add 9 to each side. Remember, you're trying to get the unknown by itself, so we don't want to get rid of that 3 there. I sometimes see people that want to get rid of the 3. No, get rid of that 9 because it's the same side as the a. So that gives us 12 equals 3a. A equals 4. Yeah. Problem number 2, 8c plus 5 equals 2c minus 13. Get rid of this 2c. This one doesn't end up exactly ideal. Um, you get 6c plus 5 equals negative 13. When we subtract that 5, we have a negative we're subtracting from it, which some people get confused by. So I apologize for that, but that's just how this problem worked out. Yeah, there's not much I can do about that. 6c equals negative 18, divide by 6, c equals negative 3. I'll leave it to you guys to check your solutions on these by substituting, but I do want to see that in your notes, all right? Okay, here are the five equations. If you happen to not get that done, I've got all five of them right here. You can pause the video, copy that down. That was a homework assignment from the last video, from the last uh, day of notes, so if you missed that, please get that down, all right? That's something that a lot of people, I hope people aren't going to have that missing other grade. Um, today's objective, we can solve multiple equations better. That's our goal is to improve on that. So last time we had two new situations, no solutions and all real numbers. No solutions was when we had something like 3 equals 4. That we got rid of all the x's in the equation, what was left is 3 and 4 and those aren't equal. So key thing, first bullet point, for no solutions you have to have no unknowns left. If there's an x Anywhere in your equation, you do not say no solutions. So like on these ones, where we had a C or an A or whatever, if there's an unknown left in your equation, you do not say no solutions. I have a lot of kids that say no solutions when they have a known still, but they just aren't sure what to do next. No, that does not mean no solutions. I will never accept a no solutions answer unless you've removed all of the unknowns. And then you have to have different numbers here. So no unknowns and different numbers. I have a lot of kids, they get something where they're like, well, I've got 17 divided by 3. 17 doesn't divide by 3. Oh, it's no solutions. Wrong. It's not no solutions. You have an answer of 17 over 3. Let me show you that, all right? I have so many people that say 3x equals 17. They divide by 3. They divide by 3. Then they say no solutions. No, it is not no solutions. You actually have a solution right here x equals 17 over 3. It's a number. It works. No solutions is when there is no x left anymore and all that's left are numbers that aren't equal. Okay, all real numbers. With all real numbers is a key phrase we use with that, which is infinitely many solutions. If they ask you for how many solutions there are, there's infinitely many. That makes sense because infinitely many real numbers. That's when we have something like 5 equals 5. Two numbers that are the same. Once again, you should have no unknowns. I have some people that theoretically could have something like x equals x, but I find that most students get confused by that one more so than this one. Get rid of the unknowns instead, so you have 5 equals 5. No unknowns and different number and same number. Yeah. So let's kind of look at these in action. Try solving these equations. On each of them, you need to simplify one side or the other, at least, possibly both sides, before you can solve. Pause the video. And we're back. So number five, we've got 3c plus 10 plus 2c. Combine those c's together, 3c plus 2c is 5c, 5c plus 10. Uh, sometimes I have people that want to subtract 2c from each side, like this. That is wrong. That is twice from the same side. Here's the equal sign, twice on the same side, no good. You'd actually be subtracting the, 5C over, the 2c over here, which really doesn't do very much for you. 
and you're much better off combining the 2c with the 3c, giving you a 5c. Over here, we have 5c plus 2, multiply the 5 by the c, 5c, multiply the 5 by the 2, 10. 5c plus 10. Now we're at the big moment of decision. We need to get rid of one of our unknowns. Always, if there's unknowns on both sides, get rid of one of them. Do we want to get rid of the 5c or the 5c? Hopefully you said the 5c. That would be right, subtract the 5c. By the way, there's not really any difference there. I just like to pretend there is. It's one of my dumb things I do in class, so kids will be like, well, I subtracted off the 5c, and I'll be like, mm, I'm not sure that's going to work. Let's see. Oh, good, it did. Okay, I guess that works out all right then. One of my stupid Mr. Olson jokes. You know me. I was making dumb jokes. So 10 equals 10. 10 does equal 10. So let's look back here. No unknowns. Different numbers? No, it's not that. No unknowns. Same number? Yeah. All real numbers. Infinitely many solutions. So, at, not x. C. C equals all real numbers. And if we were asked how many solutions, we have infinitely many solutions. Do not ever say C equals infinitely many solutions, because that doesn't really mean that much. To check this, choose some random numbers for C. How about 3? I like 3. It's a good number. So we put in a 3 for C back at the beginning and substitute that in. 3 times 3 plus 10 plus three ti 2 times 3. Plus 2 times 3 equals 5 times 3 plus 2. 3 times 3, that is 9. 9 plus 10 plus 2 times 3, that is 6. 3 plus 2, that is 5. 5 times 5. 9 plus 10 is 19, plus 6 is 25, equals 5 times 5, 25. That worked, so we must be right. Either that or I just got incredibly lucky that it turned out that 3 was the solution to that. But you just choose some random number, plug it in, see if it works. Okay, here we need to distribute first. 5 times d is 5d, 5 times minus 6 is minus 30. So 5d minus 30 equals 30 plus 5d. Subtract, now, I don't want to jump with that one, sorry. Do we want to subtract off the 5d? or the 5D. Let's actually subtract off the 5D. That gives us negative 30 equals 30. Those are not equal, so this isn't equal and that isn't equal. None of this was ever equal, so there's no solution. I don't know why I have so much energy on this video today. I don't know. It's weird. Oh, it's because I was talking to my brother on the phone and he always gets me energized. He's a good guy. Hold all his energy. No solution. We check a no solution one the exact same way we checked our other solution, uh, all real numbers one. We choose a random number, see what happens. Let's go with 10. I'm feeling 10 this time. So 5 times 10 minus 6 equals 30 plus 5 times 10. So 10 minus 6, that's 4. 5 times 4, 20. Here, 30 plus 5 times 10, 50. 30 plus 50, 80. Here's the trick to this. 20 and 80 are 60 apart. 80 minus 20 is 60. 30 minus negative 30, also 60. These are also 60 apart. If we have the same distance apart each time, then we know that we've got a real no solution situation. Try out these ones here. Pause the video. And we're back. So I'll go over number seven with you. Actually, I'll, I'll give you the first steps on each one. And if you have too, any more questions than that on these, then please ask me. Otherwise, just solve them on your own, turn it in with them solved. If I look at your notes and you haven't really solved stuff, then you're not getting full credit. So 6i minus 2i, that'd be 4i. That one in class is hilarious, because I'm like, so what do we get when we combine those? And someone will say, you get 4i. And I'm like, hey, just because I have classes, it doesn't mean you can call me 4i. It's, come on, that's rude. And then we'll want to subtract off the 4i, get rid of the 4i's, I mean the 4i. And that gives us 7 equals 3i plus 1. Number 8, you might think you want to get rid of the 4j. Let's just look at both situations here, okay? So maybe you look at this and the 4j is smaller. Or you might look at this and say the 5j, that's a negative 5j, so that's a negative, so that's smaller. If we subtract 4j from each side, then we've got this negative minus something, which is negative 9j. Last year, my ninth graders messed up on that so much. And that was ninth grade honors kids. They made a lot of mistakes with that type of thing. You should always get rid of the smaller unknown, 4 is actually not smaller than negative 5. Negative 5 is negative. Watch what happens when you get rid of negative 5. We're adding 5j plus 5j here. That's a positive 9j. So here we end up subtracting from a negative. It gets confusing. It's easy to make mistakes with that. And it results in a negative. Here we're adding something. 
Adding is easier than subtracting. We almost always do better with adding than subtracting. It's a proven fact in math. Uh, that most that people make more mistakes subtracting than adding. And we end up with a positive. Always get rid of the smaller or known. It really does make a difference. Uh, last year for the ninth graders, I would see so many more mistakes if they would get rid of the bigger unknown than if they got rid of the smaller unknown. Always remove the smaller unknown. It's like nature. Um, in the wild, you have a herd of a pack of wolves that they're in Yellowstone chasing down the pack herd of buffalo. They don't go for the biggest, toughest buffalo. They find the smallest, weakest buffalo and take that one out. It's brutal. Nature, nature is brutal and uncompromising and just awful that way. And so is math. We get rid of the smaller, weaker unknown because it's easier to take it out. Can't fight that. Try out these ones here. Pause the video. Okay, so on number nine, we add that 5e to each side. So that gives us 8e minus 7 equals 17. Solve the rest of that on your own. Number 10, 5f minus 2f, that gives us 3f plus 12 equals, uh, distribute that, 3f plus 12. Subtract 3f. And then we end up with 12 equals 12. Wait, that's not a, we know the solutions, right? That means that our solution is that f can equal anything. It doesn't matter what f equals. f equals all real numbers. Today in class I asked someone, so what's, what's our solution on this one? They said, it's all of them. And I'm like, all of them? And I'm like, actually, that's a pretty good answer. All real numbers. And there are infinitely many solutions. A couple years back, I had a kid named Manny, and uh, we would uh, always say infinitely Manny solutions, and that would make him upset with us. It was great. <sighs> I miss that class. I miss a lot of them. You know what? It's funny. So often I think about my old classes, and I always kind of miss them a little bit. Plug in any random number for f, and check that it works. Okay, we've got two more equations here. Pause the video, try these out. And we're back. Um, I'll go over number 11 with you. Number, uh... Oh, wait, I missed... Did I mess this up? Actually, do both of these on your own, all right? Try both of these ones out on your own. Show me those in your notes. We had a homework assignment on this day, and that was page 22 from the book. Do these, these equations here, A, B, and C. And that is all. That is what you need to do. Um, yeah, finish up all the notes, the ones I didn't go over with you. I want you to do it on your own. Try them out. Yeah. And then uh, these ones are homework. Do those as well. See you later. Bye.